What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here, and thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2014 BMW F10 550i. Today on the 550 behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your front brakes. In front of us, we have a Zimmerman Akibono kit, which is available on fcpo.com. It includes the brake discs, the pads, the wear sensor, and the clip for the wear sensor. In addition to the kit, we have gone ahead and added two set screws for the front rotors. These are not included. They don't always need to be replaced, but we are in New England. This car does see winter, so we're just going to go ahead and be preventative here and get new ones. Brakes are going to last you anywhere from 40 to 60,000 miles. It truly depends on your driving habits and how you drive your vehicle. Um, these Acubono pads are great. They're going to provide same OEM bite, but with low dust. So for cars like these that are notorious for having dusty um, wheels, this is definitely going to be a nice alternative to help keep them a little bit cleaner. Now, some things to note before you do a brake job is if you want to inspect the brakes, maybe you want to do a visual inspection first, take a look at the brake discs. If you have a lip on the inner or outer portion of the rotor, then more than likely they're worn. In addition to that, as they get worse, you may feel pulsating at your steering wheel. That's a good indication that the rotors are shot. They could be warped, but also keep in mind that that could also be worn suspension components. So just two things to keep in mind there. In addition to that, you always want to look at the thickness on the pads. There are feeler gauges out there that you can use to measure the thickness. Anything less than two mil, you want to go ahead and replace them. And also important to note, as these sensors wear out, they will trigger a light on the dash telling you to change your brakes. So if you have that light on the dash, you might as well go ahead and do the whole thing. We always recommend pad and rotor replacement at the same time. This DIY is going to be applicable to both your F10 550i vehicles and F12 650i vehicles. It's going to be the exact same process. Now, before we get started on this job, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this DIY. For this job, you're going to need a torque wrench. We have both a half inch drive and three eighths drive, something that can handle 16 Newton meters all the way to 140 Newton meters. We also have both a half inch drive and three eighths drive ratchet. Along with those, we have a 17 millimeter lug bolt socket. We have a nine millimeter hex, a six millimeter hex, and an 18 millimeter socket. We have a caliper hanger tool. If you do not have one of those, a bungee cord will suffice. In an extreme pinch, you can use uh, zip ties. We have a trim removal tool or river removal tool. This is going to be specifically for accessing the cowl panel that hides the brake master cylinder reservoir. So we can see what the fluid level is at and make sure we're keeping an eye on it. We don't want to overpressurize that system. We have CTA 1465. This is a single piston caliper compressing tool. This one's going to fit just nicely on the body of our front caliper. There are other alternatives available also on fcpo.com if you want to use a different tool. We have a small wire brush. You can use a wire wheel attachment on a drill. And then some nice to haves are parts brake cleaner. We have an electric impact for our lug bolts. And we're going to be using liquid molly ceramic paste as our lubricant for today. Now with that, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. Before we get started, the first thing you want to be aware of is A, the location of the brake master cylinder reservoir, and B, what the fluid level is on the vehicle. On the F10, it's going to be located on the driver's side underneath this shield right here uh, by the cowl. So we're going to go ahead and remove the three expanding rivets that hold it into place. We're just going to use a rivet removal tool. You can use a small flathead or pick. We have this in the shop, so we're going to use this today. We'll pull all three of them out. You F12 owners out there, let me know if it's the same process on the F12. Leave a comment in the box below. Here's a better look at this cowl piece. Again, just three expanding rivets. It's impossible to miss them. They sit right underneath the windshield wiper arm. With this, we can set these to the side. All right, and with the cowl piece off, now we can see our reservoir, which is tucked in behind this brace in this lower corner of the firewall. Again, it's a small reservoir. We just wanna make note of the fluid level. If you like, this is a good time to remove the cap and inspect the quality of the fluid. This one is a bit dirty, so this car is definitely due for a flush. Let us know in the comments if you wanna see that DIY. But with that, let's go ahead and get started on our job. All right, to get started, we're going to start by moving the five 17 millimeter lug bolts that hold our wheel in place. If you do not have an impact gun, make sure you break these free with a breaker bar first before raising up the vehicle. 
Today we're on the lift, but this is an easy floor jack and jack stand type of job. So we're gonna take our impact, zap these out first. All right, make sure to hang onto the wheel. It will fall off unless it's nice and crusty, which is not the case for us today. All right. Now that we have our wheel off, we have a better view of where we're going to be working. We're kind of going to work our way from the front to back and we're focusing on the driver's side today. However, the steps are going to be identical for the driver and passenger side. The only difference being that the driver's side is the one equipped with the brake pad wear sensor. So we want to show you how to replace that, which is why we're showing you the driver's side today. So with that, let's continue on. All right, my good people, before we start with the rear portion of removing the caliper, we're going to focus on two things up front. First is going to be making sure we can remove the set screw. The last thing I want to do is take all this apart just to find out that that's seized in there or anything. Worst case scenario, right? So we're just going to want to work backwards. We're going to grab our six millimeter hex on our ratchet here and just make sure we can break that free. If you need to, don't be afraid to hit it with some penetrating fluid to loosen it up. This is nice and loose. So you can see the brakes on this car are not too old, but the owner of the car does have a really bad pulsating um, happening when they step on the brakes. They think it's the brakes, so we're just gonna go ahead and replace them. Again, keep in mind, sometimes it can be bad control arm bushings or ball joints or anything related to the suspension as well. So he already had the brakes, we're gonna replace them, rule that out for them, and then they can continue diagnosing from there. But I digress, six millimeter hex, that is nice and loose. We're gonna leave it on for now. Then from there, we're gonna go ahead and remove the set screw. I'm gonna use a small flathead screwdriver for this. The goal here is to pry the center tab out of the copper bracket, just like that. Nice and easy. Now we have our set screw loose and we have our anti-rattle clip free. The next step is gonna to be to remove the brake pad wear sensor. And that gets routed from the middle of the caliper here, all around the inside in front of the control arm up into this electrical housing in the wheel well, which we'll show you in just a moment. So get a little closer and we'll show you how to remove that and get ready to install the new one and just let it hang out in the meantime. So over on the driver's side caliper, our brake pad wear sensor enters the brake pad itself. It's important to note that it's located on the inboard pad. You always want to replace these. They pretty much lose their um, strength to grip into the brake pad, if you will, even if the sensor has not been triggered. So there's a chance this could fall out. If you reuse this, it's cheap enough and it's included in the kit. We're just going to pull this one out. Then it gets routed up to this white clip, which is included with our kit. So we're gonna be replacing that. So we're gonna cut these zip ties off now. We'll snip these off. It looks like someone did those as insurance. These tabs were just a little broken, but we have a new one. So we'll take that off. And from there, we have a small tab that retains both our ABS cable and our brake pad wire sensor. They simply slide out towards the control arm. It's like a little uh, U-shaped bracket, similar to the ones up here. Same deal, we're just gonna slide them out, riddled with zip ties, which, you know, I don't mind, good insurance, but not super necessary when the clips are doing their job. And then we can see up here, there's two more, there's another tab, two of them, one's for the ABS cable, which we'll leave alone, and one is for the brake pad wire sensor, which we're just gonna pull out towards the front of the car. We're gonna follow that up to another tab by the hard line. Same thing, pull that up. A couple small clips up here that just help guide the line. And now we get to the junction box, which we're just gonna go ahead and pop open. Two small plastic tabs, pull that shut. Sometimes these are crusty or filled with road debris. So just be mindful if you're working on the ground, you don't want that stuff in your eyes. Then you can pull the whole connector out. And pretty standard, we have a small tab on here that you just Press and disconnect. And now let me grab our new sensor and we'll just get it routed now so it's ready to go when we need it later. And now we're gonna work in the reverse order. We're gonna plug it in. Okay. We're gonna feed it back into the housing. Note there is a notch on the end of the sensor. This part goes on the outside, little ridge for the box, and then the rest goes inside. Helps lock it in place and keep it from moving. Close that up. I'm just gonna follow the clips all the way back down to our brake caliper pretty much. Every little grommet has a notch for these metal tabs that they lock into. 
These can be a little tight sometimes if you need to. Don't be afraid to lube them up. Just gonna use a little brake parts cleaner to act as a lubricant. Beautiful. Now we're gonna guide the cable underneath these two metal tabs like they were before. We're gonna follow that over. Same thing. We have that small tab by the soft line over here on the rear section of the control arm. And then for now, we're just gonna let this hang out and then we'll install the new clip and install this into the brake pad once we have everything situated. So with that, let's hop over to the rear and work on removing this caliper. All right, on the back of the caliper, we have two plastic dust caps that cover in our guide pin bolts. Before we pop those off, we're just gonna pop the soft line off of the retaining tab here that gives us a little bit more slack to move this copper around, just pulls up out of the clip. Then you can take a flathead screwdriver or just your fingers and pop these small plastic caps off. Just don't forget to put them back on when you're done. They keep the debris out of the guide pins, allows everything to free, freely move back and forth. Now from there, we're gonna put on our nine millimeter hex using a socket bit on my 3H drive ratchet, and we're gonna break these guide pins free and remove them. Sometimes if you twist your bit at an angle, you can use it to drive the guide pins out. Same thing, just wiggling my nine millimeter hex bit on the ratchet just to help kind of get this guy out. And we can set this to the side. We'll clean those up before we reinstall them. And now we're just gonna get our caliper hook ready. We're gonna pull this caliper off. Be mindful that the outboard pad just sits on the carrier so that can fall out. And the inboard pad is typically clipped into the piston on the brake caliper itself. This one was a little loose, so it was ready to kind of fall out. But we can swing this over and we'll just hang it off of the upper control arm. With that, now we have two carrier bolts to remove. All right, with that, we're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket using a half inch drive ratchet just to break these two 18s free and then we can remove them. Once you break them free, you can remove them by hand the rest of the way. With this off, the focus here is gonna be the two areas that the pads ride on. So you wanna make sure you clean these off really well, use a small wire brush or wire wheel, a little bit of parts cleaner before you reinstall everything. So we'll be sure to clean this before we put the car back together. But with that, let's go ahead and remove our brake disc and then we can start on the installation of our new parts. All right, now we're gonna take our six millimeter hex and remove our set screw. Again, we make sure that would break free at the beginning. I know that this disc is gonna come off no problem because these were not done too long ago, as I mentioned, but sometimes you need a large hammer. So get that handy in case you need to whack these rotors off of your hubs. All right, with that, we're just gonna go ahead and take a minute to clean this hub up. We're gonna prep it so we can use some liquid moly ceramic paste. Zimmerman does not really require you to use any paste with their zinc coated rotors, but we do live in New England this car is gonna see salt, so more than likely it will still corrode. But once we clean that up, the next thing we're gonna do actually is we're gonna prep our caliper so we can install our new pads once we're at that point. And by that, I mean, we're gonna get working on compressing the piston back into the caliper. So we'll clean this up and let's pick it up at the caliper. Now we're gonna go ahead and compress the piston while we have nice, easy access to it. No brake disc in the way to scratch or, not scratch, but you know what I mean, my good people. We're not trying to mar stuff up here. So. First, we're gonna use our piston compressor tool. Again, we're using the single piston tool today. This head is just small enough to fit through the front portion of the caliper. You can always opt in using a dual piston compressor, something like this that will spread on both ends, but most of us don't have these at home. These are pretty accessible and also available on the site. So what we're gonna do here is feed our tool through first, and then we're gonna use our old inboard brake pad, you always want to hang on to these until you're done with the job. 
And that's going to be taking up some of the slack as well as allowing us to keep from damaging our piston. Our, yeah, exactly, our piston. So we're just going to turn this until this backing plate butts up with the back of the caliper or the front of the caliper. There we go. And we're just going to tighten with our hand and compress. These shouldn't travel too, too far as the pads were not that worn. Once the tool bottoms out, then you're done. If you have a hard time compressing the piston whenever you're doing a brake job, make sure that there's nothing funky going on. Make sure the seals don't look torn or bad. You could have a bad piston or in some other cases, you could have a collapsed soft line. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. This should be a very easy process. And honestly, you may be even able to push them in by hand. Sometimes that's the case. We'll get this pad out of the way. Now we can take our tool out. And while we're here, we can go ahead and load the inboard pad now. So let's do that next. I like to use a little bit of liquid moly ceramic paste on the tabs that go into the piston, just to kind of keep them from corroding in there. I'm not too worried about this type of piston corroding, but I am worried about the tabs on the pads corroding. So whatever will help the longevity while these live in the vehicle. Now we're just gonna go ahead and clip this into the piston. Again, goal here is not to get any debris or material that isn't brake pad material on the pads. That's a nice clip. That's how they should really sit in there. They shouldn't fall out on you when you're removing them. But with that said, while we have the paste out, let's go ahead and Bob Ross the front of this hub. We'll just get a nice coating on here for our new brake disc. And now with that, we're gonna go ahead and swap over to some clean gloves. You don't wanna get your fingerprints all over the brake disc, mainly because they are zinc coated. You don't wanna hit those with any type of chemical or brake cleaner as it will degrade the coating. And you also don't wanna get anything on the contact surface of where the pads are gonna ride because you're gonna contaminate the surface of the pads. The pads alone will take off the coating on their own when you bed in the pads, so don't worry about that. But we don't wanna get any grease where there shouldn't be any. So some fresh gloves, we'll get our new set screw and we'll sit the rotor in place. Now we're just gonna take our new rotor, set it on the hub, try to line up our set screw. Make sure that's seated nicely. There's a lip on the hub that these sit on. I'll take our set screw, get that started by hand. You can use the six millimeter hex bit as well. The torque spec for the six millimeter hex is gonna be 16 Newton meters. Such a low spec today, we're just gonna use the old calibrated wrist to snug them up gently, but you can torque them if you're following along at home. Beautiful. Now with that, let's hop over to the back and we'll get ready to set our caliper carrier back in place so that we can swing over our brake caliper. So let's do that now. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our brake caliper carrier. The hardware for that, again, is eight, two 18 millimeter bolts. They are reusable. So just make sure if there's any debris on them or grime that you clean them off before reinstalling. We're gonna tighten these two 18 millimeter bolts to 110 Newton meters. All right, with that, now we can work on getting our caliper swung over and our front brake pad mounted. I'm gonna apply a little bit of paste to the ears on the brake pads where they're gonna ride on the caliper carrier specifically. So that should look something like that. Be sure to put some on the inboard pad, which we already set on our caliper. And now with that, we can swing it over. Get it off of our hook. Don't forget to take your hook off completely. I can't tell you how many cars I've sent home with the hooks on them still. None, okay? I don't do that. We'll set our caliper on, beautiful. And now we can get our two guide pins and get those threaded in. At this point, it is totally dealer's choice if you want to lube these guide pins up. BMW doesn't recommend it or require it. However, I've been lubing mine up for the last 14 years that I've been doing brakes. In this case, the last person that did this brake job coded the inside of these guide pin tubes. So I simply cleaned off the guide pins and I'm just reinstalling them dry because there's still enough coating in there for the next three, four brake jobs that this car ever sees. We're gonna switch over to our nine millimeter hex and we're gonna torque these two guide pin bolts down to 35 Newton meters. All 
All right, let's set our torque wrench to 35 Newton meters. There's two. Let's put our dust caps back on. So now we're gonna go ahead and A, get our brake pad wear sensor out of our little home that we tucked it in. This grommet goes back into this metal tab that holds the soft line in place. Just pushes in like that. Then we can take our new brake pad wear sensor clip and clip it onto the metal portion of the soft line here. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the brake pad wear sensor into the brake pad itself. There is a notched portion of the pad center that is gonna be going towards the brake disc and the flat surface is gonna be going towards the brake caliper on the inboard side. So it's only really going one way, meaty side towards the rotor, flat side towards the brake caliper. That's gonna seat in all the way. If you wanna double check it with a small screwdriver, go for it. But once it's bottomed out, it's good. And over on our white clip, you go ahead and clip this bad boy in. There we go. Nice and snug fit, no more zip ties. That looks good. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the anti-rattle clip. You wanna make sure these two tabs sit into the caliper first on the caliper carrier, and then we can pry it back while we push down on it to get the notch into the caliper carrier. With that, our anti-rattle clip is installed. We can straighten out our assembly here. And now we can grab our wheel and reinstall that now. Now with that, we'll feed our wheel back in and get our five 17 millimeter lug bolts started by hand. With all five of them started by hand, we're just gonna snug them up with the impact. We're not gonna tighten them just yet. Then we'll put the car on the ground and torque them down properly. This is just so that we know the wheel is sitting even on the hub. All right, with that, let's put it back down on the ground and we'll torque them up. Now with the car on the ground, we're gonna go ahead and torque these 17 millimeter lug bolts down to 140 Newton meters. We're gonna do this in a star pattern. And with that, my good people, that is gonna conclude this DIY for today. Overall, a really straightforward job on the F10 550i. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, or there's a specific job you wanna see us do, leave it in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.